the text visit http colon forward slash forward slash bit dot ly forward slash wtkma for details is shown on screen. Good morning everyone and welcome to the want to know more about health and well-being in Leeds Library session which is a free webinar that's going to be delivered by myself Becky Cumworth from the Public Health Resource Centre and my colleagues Lisa Fox and Andrea Ellison from Leeds Libraries. It's the 27th of January 2022 just after 11am and the session will be finished by 12pm at the latest. Leeds has a wealth of libraries for both the public and for health professionals. All Leeds libraries have a role to play in helping people to learn about health, in reducing health inequalities and in promoting health and wellbeing for all. At this session, you will learn about the health and wellbeing offers available to the public through Leeds libraries and to professional through Leeds health libraries. Between us, Lisa and I and Andrea are going to cover how Leeds libraries are supporting the five ways to wellbeing, health and wellbeing events and activities in Leeds libraries, learnable resources that link to health, such as books on prescription, volunteering opportunities at public libraries, such as reading friends, and training and resources available to help you discuss health matters with others. We're going to start with the final point, and I'm going to spend a few minutes telling you about the training and resources available to you through the Public Health Resource Centre and the city's other professional health libraries, before handing you over to Andrea and Lisa, who are going to take you through the public library's offer. On screen now is a cartoon featuring two men, one of whom is dressed in a way that indicates he's a medical doctor. The doctor is speaking and the other man is listening, and the caption under the image reads, more and more patients are going to the internet for medical advice. To keep my practice going, I changed my name to Dr. Google. It's a humorous cartoon that touches on all the different places health information is available these days, not all of which are reliable. I'm going to play you a short film in a moment, which covers the health information available from PHRC. But before I do, I want to assure you that all the information you get through public health training or from the Public Health Resource Centre is evidence-based. That means it's been rigorously scientifically tested and proven to work. There are many confusing messages about health and wellbeing out there, and if your role involves promoting health, you want to feel confident that the information you share is accurate, current and reliable. I will now play you a short film which covers the resources and training available to you from the Public Health Resource Centre, which are provided with the aim of helping you promote health to other people. It's just under four minutes long. A logo for Leeds Public Health Resource Centre is shown on screen. The Leeds Public Health Resource Centre, or PHRC, is a health library that supports anyone with a responsibility for or interest in promoting health and well-being in Leeds. The entrance porch to a building is shown. There's a large sign above it that contains the Leeds City Council logo and beneath it it says Tech North. It is located inside the Tech North building which is in Chapel Allerton. An image shows a variety of interactive three-dimensional health models and displays. You can borrow interactive health models and games, books, DVDs, teaching packs and reports on a wide variety of public health topics. A selection of health leaflets are shown on screen. We also have leaflets and posters available to order that you don't need to return. There is no charge for any part of the service offered by the PHRC. On the screen is a large room containing lots of shelves that are full of books. There is also two small tables with chairs around them, a desktop computer is at a third desk and at the rear of the room there are two large bright windows. The centre has over 4,000 resources in total, covering a breadth of health information topics. In our library, you can learn up to 10 items at a time for three weeks. A selection of health themed board games and card decks appear on screen. The names of some of the resources are readable, and they are called a therapeutic treasure deck, Let's Talk Resilience, the Hydration Game, and Mind Maze. We hold books covering health topics and mood boosting fiction, teaching packs and games, which can be useful aids for broaching subjects like emotions and nutrition with young people. A variety of flyers move quickly across screen, followed by larger images of individual flyers for alcohol and drug support services, flu vaccination, healthy living in Leeds and diabetes. 
We hold hundreds of leaflets and posters available to order for our members, free of charge, made by our partner organisations in Leeds, the NHS, public health and charities. Seven more images of individual flyers appear, one at a time. They are called Free School Immunisation, the Eat Well Guide, Spot Cancer Early, Feel Better, Quitting Smoking, Do You Need Debt or Money Advice and Feel Like You've Had Enough. We have leaflets and posters available covering well-being and health conditions for all ages, including immunisations, nutrition, cancers, mental health, smoking cessation, help with managing money and local Leeds health services. Some three-dimensional interactive models and resources appear. They include a pair of diseased lungs, an open mouth with decaying teeth and a doll. We also see a cloth bag with the text bag of germs on it, a torch and a person's hands glowing blue inside an ultraviolet light box. As a member of the PHRC, you can load up to five health models at a time. We have over 200 health models to help further illustrate health topics, covering mental health. A pile of small rectangular wooden blocks appears, identical in size, but with different emotions written on each one. Some of the blocks are stacked in a tower, some are loose. Drug and alcohol awareness. Several small plastic display boxes appear containing models of different drugs. Dental hygiene. A model of some teeth appears next to a toothbrush and a small hourglass sand timer. Cardiovascular disease. Models of a human heart and a colluded artery are shown. Smoking. A display box with several small compartments appears, each of which is a different item inside it. A compartment at the top says, what's in tobacco smoke? Healthy eating. On screen is a large plastic mat with an image of a dinner plate split into four sections. Each section has a different type of food in it and the text at the top of the mat says, eat well guide. And general anatomy education. A 3D model of a skull and a human brain is shown. Once again, all our resources at the PHRC are free. You can search for them on our catalogue at www.leeds.gov.uk slash phrc and click the search our catalogue button. You can also find details about how to order and collect leaflets and posters and how to borrow and return resources. In addition, the PHRC website contains a variety of information about public health in Leeds, which you can explore at any time. This includes information about current campaigns, services, initiatives, strategies and statistics. The Leeds Public Health team also offer training sessions on a range of health topics. You can find out more about upcoming sessions on how to book by visiting www.leeds.gov.uk slash lpht. We have a regularly updated playlist of training and want to know more about webinars that have been delivered online and published on YouTube which can be viewed at www bit.ly slash lpht films. To join the PHRC, visit www.leeds.gov.uk slash phrc. Click on the register with the PHRC and complete and submit the online form. The Leeds PHRC logo is shown. For the latest information about the training and resources available from the Resource Centre, and about public health in Leeds, find and follow at PHRC Leeds on social media. The PHRC logo is shown on screen with the logos for YouTube, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram around it. I hope you gained from that film that although the PHRC is a library, it stocks more than books alone. Obviously, we do have books, lots of books. We have textbooks that are evidence-based on a range of health topics, but we also have books containing personal stories from people with lived experience of particular conditions. We have DVDs, games and activities, models, teaching packs, leaflets and posters, and we deliver training and events. Some of our resources are most suited to helping you to learn about health topics that you're interested in, and some are designed to help you have conversations with other people about health and to help them to learn and explore health issues. How can you access the centre? First, join up for free online via the PHRC website, leeds.gov.uk forward slash PHRC. 
You can then visit the centre to browse the collection, but please be aware that at the moment, this is by appointment only during the pandemic. You can email phrc at leeds.gov.uk or call 0113 378 6200 to arrange a visit. Alternately, you can use the online catalogue on the PHRC website to search and place a hold on resources. You can also search for leaflets and posters on the online catalogue and then order by emailing phrc at leeds.gov.uk. You follow us on social media at PHRC Leeds for information on the latest campaigns, events and resources. And when you join, if you sign up for our two newsletters, we have Public Health Effectiveness Bulletin, which is about what's going on in public health in general. And then we have the PHRC newsletter, which is about what's going on in the centre. Before I finish and hand you over to Andrea and Lisa, I just wanted to mention that the PHRC is one of six professional health libraries in Leeds. The others are available to people who work in the organisations that they exist within. Leeds Community Healthcare Library is for staff in Leeds Community Healthcare NHS Trust. Three libraries are available to staff within the Leeds Teaching Hospitals Trust, and they are Leeds General Infirmary Library, St James's University Hospital Library, and Wharfdale Hospital Library. And the Mental Health Library is for staff within Leeds and York Partnership NHS Foundation Trust. There is an interlibrary loan system in place that operates across these six libraries, which means if you join the Public Health Resource Centre and we don't have the book you want, but one of the other libraries does, you can still borrow it and you'd still collect it from and return it to the Public Health Resource Centre. And the task of moving items between the libraries is done by us behind the scenes. Are there any questions before I hand you over to Andrea and Lisa? Can you take that as a no? The text Leeds Libraries Health and Wellbeing Offer, Andrea Ellison and Lisa Falks is shown on screen. OK, thank you, Rebecca. Um, so as Rebecca said, my name is Andrea Ellison. I'm Chief Librarian for Leeds Libraries and I'm joined this morning by Lisa Falks, who's our Senior Librarian for Health and Wellbeing. I'm just going to begin with a few words of introduction about our service and then Lisa's going to cover in a little more detail about how our public library service in Leeds supports the five ways to wellbeing. So libraries are a statutory service, um, they're part of a national network of 150 libraries and this resource, this national resource, has, a really, has the potential to play a really important role in supporting the health and wellbeing of our communities as I hope our presentation this morning will demonstrate. So as a service, we're guided very much by our National Libraries Universal Office Programme. This programme was introduced really to help more effectively communicate the library offer and to demonstrate the power of libraries to enrich the lives of individuals and communities. A calendar is shown on screen with the text 7th to the 13th of February, Children's Mental Health Week. 2nd to the 6th of May, Dying Matters Week Leeds. 9th to the 15th of May, Mental Health Awareness Week. 16th to the 22nd of May, Dementia Action Week. 1st to the 7th of June, Volunteers Week. 10th of June, Empathy Day. 15th to the 21st of June, Loneliness Awareness Week. 20th to the 26th of June, Refugee Week. 4th to the 10th of June, Health Information Week. 1st of October, International Day of Older Persons. 10th of October, World Mental Health Day. November, Men's Mental Health Awareness Month, November. 1st of December, International Day of People with Disabilities. Health and Wellbeing is one of the four national universal offers, and each universal offer is supported by some calendar spikes. And um, this slide here, um, basically outlines um, the calendar from January through to December um, with, with various dates highlighted. And so um, libraries across the country all come together to support these universal offers by focusing activity around the dates and themes in the calendar. More specifically, libraries contribute to the public health agenda by providing access to independent, trusted sources of information, supporting health literacy, and through a range of programmes of activity to support wellbeing. 
and our presentation will cover the key elements of this offer as we are developing it in Leeds and as we come out of the pandemic. But I thought it would be useful to begin with, with a little bit of background information about the Public Library Service in Leeds to provide some context. So across our city in Leeds, we have 34 libraries. We annually welcome around 2 million visitors a year of all ages and from all backgrounds and all sections of the community. And we have around 300,000 members. That means that actually we have 300,000 residents in Leeds who hold a library card. We have a mobile fleet of vehicles as well. We have four mobile community hubs. We have a mobile library, um, which it's not quite on the road yet, but when that starts to go out later in the year, that will be providing a service primarily to the care homes. And we also have our two story buses, which are aimed to engage children aged 0 to 5 and their family in the joy of sharing books and reading, so supporting early speech language communication and school readiness. Um, so I would say it is one of the biggest um, city library services in the country. And I think all these figures, these numbers, 34 libraries, 2 million visitors, it's a really important part of our story. And it really does help to um, evidence and demonstrate the extensive reach of public libraries into communities, as well as the cradle to grave nature of our service. So the physical building is a really important part of our offer. Our library buildings provide safe, welcoming, trusted spaces for community use and engagement in the heart of local communities. Our libraries are open for everyone to go and share, to share the resources and to share the spaces, all of which helps to build a real sense of trust, which is so important for the development of stronger, healthier, connected communities and community cohesion. So increasingly, I would say our libraries are about connections as well as collections. They're free spaces, there's no need to make an appointment, and that makes a really important contribution to that loneliness and isolation agenda. In Leeds, we have an interesting model of uh, running our libraries. We're integrated with customer services to provide a network of community hubs and libraries. And there are really huge benefits to us as a library service in this, what I call knitting together of services, because there are many customers who need access to customer services, but who would not maybe be traditional library service users. And so we're able through this partnership to extend an invitation to these customers to join the library so that they can benefit from the rich, free and diverse service that we have on offer. And in Leeds, we have really been investing in our library spaces as part of the community hub development. Um, the original library buildings have generally provided the site for the development of the community hubs. And restoring some of these historical buildings has been a really important and really appreciated way to connect people to their past. Our vision has been very much to bring the buildings back to life, to create a contemporary place with a connection to the historic past, a space for everyone to go and enjoy, a space in the community with well-being at the heart of its offer. Two images are shown on screen. One shows the outside of Hunslet Library. The other shows a display inside a library made to look like a giant book. The text, Libraries are free, welcoming and safe spaces in the heart of local communities is also shown. And I've just got a few slides now um, to give you a sense of um, the quality of some of our refurbishments. Okay, this um, first slide shows an image of Armley Library. Um, this is a fairly recent refurbishment and restoration. You can see it's a really magnificent space. Um, and you can see how the original features of the parquet floor, the lighting and the roof have all been restored to their former glory um, and how we have also um, the library shelving we've now been using um, a style which really complements the historic features but creates a sense of a modern and contemporary space. Uh, the second slide now shows another one of our more historic buildings this one is Morley and this shows an image of our children's library where bright and colourful furniture really brings the space alive. And, you know, the use of soft furnishings like the rugs really soften um, the hardwood flooring that we have actually restored as well. 
and then finally the final slide I've got um, is just to really say that we're also not we're not just restoring the historic buildings we're also upgrading some of our more modern buildings and um, what we're looking to do there is to really um, incorporate where we can some special features particularly in our children's libraries um, very much around aimed at engaging children and families and bringing the spaces alive and these are a couple of the features um, that we've got in these are actually two two images from two separate libraries the one on the left shows the giant book which is at Compton Library which also creates a little mini stage for children and on the right you see one of our features which we're using in a couple of libraries at the moment uh, and this is our space rocket and so you can really get a sense of um, how exciting these environments are for, for the children and their families. But of course it's not only about the building and the spaces, it's really as much um, about the activity, the services that are delivered from the building. It's about how we use these spaces and take our services out into communities as well. And so Lisa's now going to give us an overview of that service provision and in particular, as I said before, how our service supports the five ways to wellbeing. Text on screen reads, five ways to wellbeing. Evidence suggests that there are five steps we can take to improve our mental health and wellbeing, adopted by the NHS and mental health charities. Below these are five boxes containing further text. They read, one, connect. Good relationships with others helps build a sense of belonging. Two, be active. Physical activity can raise self-esteem, help us feel good and set goals. Three, take notice. Mindfulness can help us understand ourselves better. Four, learn. Learning new skills can boost confidence and help us connect with others. Five, give. Giving can create positive feelings and be rewarding to our mental health. Okay, so um, as you can see here, we have um, structured our offer around the five ways to well-being, um, as we think that libraries have something to contribute to all of these through our varied programmes of work. Um, as you can see on the slide, the five ways to well-being are connect, be active, take notice, learn and give. On-screen text reads, five ways to well-being through Leeds Libraries. One, connecting with others and building relationships through the library service. Libraries are welcoming places in the community to meet friends and other people. They are safe and friendly spaces which are open to all to spend time with no obligation. Some of our libraries have community cafes. Keywords associated with Leeds libraries from a recent survey. Community, friendly, accessible, helpful. A friendly and helpful staff, easily accessible location. All Leeds libraries are amazing. We go regularly. The books are a great selection for kids. Coming soon, social groups, social tables, chatty cafe, talks, events. Um, so we start with Connect. Um... Connect is one of the most obvious ways in which we can contribute through our spaces and the activities which take place within them and through our friendly and knowledgeable staff. We know that library spaces are trusted, safe and welcoming and some of the comments you can see there are from a recent survey. So it's saying friendly and helpful staff, easily accessible location. Um, all Leeds libraries are amazing. We go regularly. The books are a great selection for kids. Um, we've restarted events, stories and rhyme times are back, um, workshops, talks and work with groups and we're planning much more in the near future with regular library socials every week at several libraries across Leeds um, and social tables providing an opportunity for informal chance connections and conversations. All of this work is aiming to tackle social isolation and promote community cohesion. We'll also be expanding our programme in more specific areas, um, such as people with, living with dementia, those who have been affected by bereavement or have an interest in grief and loss, people living in care homes and people who are experiencing homelessness. On screen text reads, two, be active, promoting physical activity through the library service. Libraries have plenty of books to inspire people to stay active on topics including walking, running, cycling and more. Libraries have plenty of books to inspire people to stay active on topics including walking, running, cycling and much more. Our libraries are based at the heart of the local community, so customers can walk or cycle to visit us. 
Our local and family history library have produced various walking trails for people to follow. Coming soon, let's move in libraries, story walks, heritage walks. We contribute to health in terms of promoting physical activity via our stock. Um, the very fact that libraries are community based and um, customers can walk or cycle to visit us. Um, and we've produced some walking maps and walking trails for people to follow. Um, we're developing more work in this area in the near future. Let's Move in Libraries is an international initiative which uses the impressive reach of libraries to support healthy communities through activities such as walks from the library, exercise sessions, cookery demonstrations and more. We're in discussion at the moment with Active Leads about what this programme might look like in Leeds. On-screen text reads, free, take notice, promoting mindfulness and encouraging empathy through reading. Reading fiction is a mindful activity. We have a range of books to help promote mindfulness on our online catalogue. Some of our favourites include A Mindfulness Guide for the Frazzled by Ruby Wax Mindfulness for Mums by Izzy Judd Mindfulness for Worriers by Patrick O'Morian We deliver and promote mindfulness activities including drop in and draw and creative sessions in the drawing room at Leeds Central Library. We talk here on this slide about reading fiction is a mindful activity. Mm -hmm. um, so myself, I find doing mindfulness quite tricky. I always keep thinking, have I drifted off? Have I done it long enough? Um, whereas actually reading takes you to that different place. Um, it allows you to be in the moment. Um, but, you, you know, you can do that online as well. So we have a vast array of, um, obviously, e-books. We have e-audio. We have e-magazines. We have e-comics. We have e-newspapers. And in terms of our um, cost of living agenda, that's massively important, you know. I find it. I think it's a treat if I buy myself a magazine, um, but you can actually access the latest magazines online for free. So I think in terms of our digital offer, our support for developing literacy skills, there's, there's lots we can support you with there. On screen text reads, four, learning. Learning to do something new through the library service. Our libraries have access to plenty of books and research titles to help people learn something new. We host a varied programme of talks and workshops on local and family history arts and creative activities, offer events and more. www.ticketsource.co.uk forward slash Leeds Library Events. We have access to Reading Well collections to support people to understand and manage their health and well-being through reading. So um, we are on to um, the learn part of it. So we've always supported the learning agenda and this continues to be important to us. Um, we provide access to a wide range of informal learning opportunities, books and research titles, and talks and workshops as well. And um, we mention here Reading Well collections, which support and support people to understand and manage their health and well-being through reading. I'll be talking about those a bit more. On-screen text reads, Reading Well book lists. Reading Well helps you to understand and manage your health and well-being. The books can be recommended by a health professional or found in local libraries. There are five book lists. Reading Well for Children, information and stories on healthy minds, feelings, worries, the world around you, dealing with tough times. Reading Well for Mental Health, information and support on managing common mental health conditions and dealing with difficult feelings and experiences. Reading Well for Young People, Information and advice for 13 to 18 year olds on anxiety, stress, OCD and difficult experiences like bullying and exams. Reading well for long term conditions, information about living with long term conditions and specific conditions such as arthritis and heart disease. Reading well for dementia, which you might find helpful if you have or you're caring for someone with dementia. The Reading Well book lists, you can see there, there's Reading Well for Children, Reading Well for Mental Health, Reading Well for Young People, for Long Term Conditions and Dementia. Um, this is a shared programme between the Reading Agency and Libraries Connected and is part of the Universal Public Library Health Offer. It supports people to manage their own health and well-being with specific collections of books focusing on different health areas. These have been created by health professionals and people living with the conditions. Titles can be recommended by a health professional, like a GP, for example, or people can simply visit the library and borrow them. 
we feel that there's much potential in this programme and we're working with partners at the moment to develop reading groups around these topics. Um, these will begin with support from ourselves, but ideally become self-facilitated. And additionally, we've designed a toolkit to accompany them. I've delivered a few pilot sessions working with a group of people with dementia, which have gone really well and prompted some really interesting discussions. And we're starting another reading group for university students around the topic of sleep in, in a couple of weeks or so. So that'll be really interesting to see how that goes. An image of a flyer advertising Leeds Library's digital one-to-one -one offer is shown with a text. Free computers, printing, free internet access, tablet lending, first steps with digital, weekly digital drop-ins, Niche Academy. A team of friendly librarians on hand to help people gain digital skills and confidence using their devices through our hashtag digital one-to-one -one offer. Uh, digital one-to-one. -one. Uh, this is our digital support offer designed to help citizens develop their digital skills and confidence. We offer free access to computers in all our 34 libraries, including free and safe access to the internet and Wi-Fi. Um, we will have a tablet lending service available from April this year for people wishing to develop their digital skills from home. Um, we have support from a staff team of 300 who have all been trained as digital champions and can have positive conversations about the benefits of being online and guide residents to do simple things online. Um, we have the digital one-to-one -one helpline, which is 0113 378 5005, which can provide help and support um, and is a kind of first port of call really for, for many, of, many of our services. Um, first Steps with Digital Sessions uh, have just started and they are for complete beginners, delivered by librarians over three sessions with a course running every month at libraries across the city. We have weekly digital drop-ins at local libraries to help anyone having issues with their device or who may want to know how their device can help improve their health, access library services or save them money. We have um, a page, a, a digital platform page called Niche Academy with easy to follow guides on using popular apps and accessing our services from home. This is, this is free. Everything is free pretty much that we do. Um, there are specific modules on how to navigate the NHS website, download the NHS app and troubleshooting for AccuRx, which can be used to attend virtual consultations. Um, we've also received a significant award for a temporary staffing role to support the rollout of health literacy training across the service, which is part of a health and digital literacy pilot with Health Education England, um, SILIP, Libraries Connected and Arts Council England. This will build on the digital champion training and underpin the development work that we have planned around the offer. So we're really excited about starting with that soon. Um, moving on, digital health hubs. These are safe spaces in a community for people to access digital tools which support their health and well-being with trusted people to signpost customers to relevant information, both online and in their local area, um, and help them, for example, access their GP online, download the NHS app and other tools. As safe community spaces staffed by trusted people, libraries are perfectly positioned to develop this concept. We already provide services to help people improve their health and well-being and the digital services that I've just talked about. Um, and so this work, this will develop this work. We are building a wider network of community, healthcare and third sector organisations, all sharing resources and working towards shared goals. This partnership working will enable us to refer customers to other partners if needed and for them to refer to us. So, for example, um, perhaps a GP might refer a patient at risk of social isolation to the library service where we can provide access to our groups. Or um, a librarian might recognise that a customer has additional needs that would be better catered for by another organisation. So, for example, perhaps somebody with a disability might be referred to an organisation like AbilityNet, um, whose volunteers are trained to support people with disabilities. We've been piloting our first digital health hub at Dewsbury Road, Community Hub and Library, and we're rolling it out to all 
our other hubs and libraries this year. On screen text streets, five, give volunteering opportunities through local libraries. We're looking for volunteers in selected areas of the city to take part in our reading friends and hashtag digital one to one programs to help connect people through access to reading and digital skills. We support national awareness days to encourage people to get involved and help others. We work closely with partners such as Public Health Resource Centre and NHS libraries on health and campaigns and share information and resources to help support literacy and tackle inequalities. So um, volunteering, um, we've had a volunteering programme for many years now and we've recently developed some new opportunities for people to get involved and give something back to their communities. Reading Friends and Digital Volunteers are the main ones at the moment. Um, Reading Friends volunteers engage with participants in their own home or within a community setting to use reading in any format as a way of sparking conversations. They identify and select suitable reading material, make regular visits to participants and provide companionship and conversation. Digital volunteers support digital literacy and creative digital sessions with a wide variety of people by mentoring at code clubs and other creative digital events. Some are also digital champions for our digital one-to-one -one program that we mentioned, um, and they can deliver one-to-one -one support over the phone or via video in one of our libraries or other settings to help people learn basic skills. And we also work with others such as the Public Health Resource Centre to share information, campaigns and resources. On-screen text reads health and libraries, useful stats. Non-readers are 28% more likely to report feelings of depression and about 1.3 million people in the UK say they rarely read because of depression. Reading for just six minutes can reduce stress levels by 68%. Studies have shown that those who read for pleasure have higher levels of self-esteem and a greater ability to cope with difficult situations. Reading for pleasure was also associated with better sleeping patterns. Adults who read for just 30 minutes a week are 20% more likely to report greater life satisfaction. Source, the Reading Agency, University of Liverpool Study, 2015. Um, and here are just a few statistics about the importance of reading and its impact on health and well-being. Um, as you can see here, we have um, reading for just six minutes can reduce stress levels by 68%. Um, Adults who read for just 30 minutes a week are 20% more likely to report greater life satisfaction. Um, so these are just a few things to, to note, really. The web link www.leads.gov.uk forward slash libraries is shown. And we have a few messages to share. Just these are general messages about the public library service in Leeds. Um, you may know most of this already, but we always think it's useful to remind people so, as it says on the slide, we're open, accessible to all. It's free to join, borrow books and use our computers. We're safe and welcoming spaces with friendly and helpful staff. You can come in and spend time without having to worry about spending money. We're convenient. There'll be one near you. Um, and there's a link um, to our website where you'll find your nearest library. We have books and information to help you manage health conditions, as I've mentioned, or find out more about subjects like anxiety, stress or depression. We host regular events, talks and workshops, and most of these are free. Uh, and here are some more targeted messages, um, which will be useful for some of you. So people who are better informed have better health outcomes. Libraries are well placed to address this through our extensive reach into communities. Through the provision of free access to the Internet, uh, online resources and, and our staff, we can empower people to access, understand and use the information effectively. And we provide free, independent and trusted sources of information. Um, and so um, we'd like to ask, we have three asks of you today, um, just as I'm coming to a close. Um, we'd love it if you'd consider becoming a member of the library service, if you're not already, um, and encourage family and friends to join as well. Um, it'd be great if you would like to talk to us about any ideas you have for using our services and spaces to help improve the health and well-being of our communities. Um, and it would also be fantastic if you promote library membership and use of libraries to those residents that you're working with. 
two email addresses appear on screen lisa.folks at leeds.gov.uk and leedslibraries at leeds.gov.uk. More on screen text reads follow us on social media, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Leeds Libraries. Sign up to the newsletter. And then I'll just finish with uh, these are my contact details here. Uh, well, my email address, and then there is the general email address for Leeds Libraries as a whole. Um, we have our social media handles there, and there's also a link to sign up to our monthly e-newsletter, which has lots of information about what we have coming up. And thank you very much. Thanks, Lisa. Um, there's a couple of questions that have come up in the chat. So we have a question from Tracy. She's asked, is the library service going to restart the home delivery service of books and talking books? Shall I answer that one, Lisa? Yes, it's fine. Um, so uh, Lisa mentioned, I think, the Leading Friends initiative. Um, and what we're trying to do is, uh, uh, obviously, when we had to go into lockdown, um, it gave us time to think about our service provision. And what we're trying to do, actually, is uh, move towards the Reading Friends model of delivery for our um, what we used to call library at home service. Um, and that means that rather than a van rushing around the whole authority, um, dropping off books to residents, we're wanting to work with volunteers locally so that those volunteers can spend more time with residents. Because a lot of the people who are accessing that service are those who are most um, most excluded and most isolated. So people accessing that service had no family or friends who could visit the library for them and obviously couldn't visit them themselves. So um, our learning is really that what those people really need is some social interaction. So we've been really successful in um, talking with the, the, the service users and really working to develop our network of volunteers as well and asking them if they'd be interested in taking on that role. So we're increasingly shifting over to that. In terms of the talking book service, we're working more closely with the RNIB service that actually delivers that so we can put residents in direct um, communication with them. So really looking to provide a more meaningful service than just a delivery van going out, dropping off books, but actually provide that opportunity for a real befriending service, very much linked to having conversations about books and, and reading. Thanks, Andrea. Next question is from Jasper. She's asked, are the Reading Well books available from the Public Health Resource Centre? Rebecca Varnanen, if you'd like to answer this one for us. Ah, uh, yes, um, we've, we should have um, most, if not all of those books. So um, that, that's been a really key part of our um, project. So like, collect them together so yes you should be able to order them and again as Becky said the interlibrary loan between the NHS libraries I know that they have quite a few of them as well. Yeah I think that's one of our very very valuable potentially very valuable but quite underutilized collections um, and I think that's why we're trying to develop the program of work that Lisa mentioned around um, the peer support leader development group so that actually we can really focus those on people with maybe a specific long term condition. So Lisa's mentioned the pilot work we're doing with the university around the issue of sleep. They're really interested in that. So just coming together over a three or four week period, reading a chapter of the book together and discussing anything that, that they learned from it and anything that they found that, that had been useful um, to support them better manage their own conditions. And so another question for you ladies. So Tracy's asked, would reading friends visit residential care homes? Yeah, I, I think we'd be very, as we start to develop Reading Friends, the key thing we need with Reading Friends is we really need to increase um, increase our, our volunteer base for that as well. So any of you that know anybody or if you would like to consider becoming a Reading Friend volunteer yourself, I think it would be absolutely hugely beneficial. I mean, part of our community, I mentioned we're going to have a mobile library that's essentially going to be um, providing a service to the care homes. But on that mobile library, we're going to be hopefully, after we can embed our service in, having a role for community librarians to, I don't know, once every so often, once a month, whatever, having a different focus for a visit to care homes, and it might be around digital skills. But I think reading friends is something we would really like to, to get developed. But as I say, that's a, a, a volunteer offer. Um, so we would just love to, to work with more volunteers on that, that programme. 
A link to a copy of today's slides will be sent to you via Eventbrite. Um, today's session has been recorded, so it will appear on www.bit.ly forward slash LPHD films in about two weeks' time. So please visit the site to view it. Please complete the electronic evaluation survey for today's session, which has been emailed to you again from the City Council via Eventbrite. For information about public health training, including future want to know more about sessions like this one, please visit leeds.gov.uk forward slash LPHT. For resources and further information linking to today's topic, um, you can explore the Public Health Resource Centre website at leeds.gov.uk forward slash PHRC. And to learn about specific resources that the PHRC holds, visit www.bit.ly forward slash PHRC films. And you can watch resource demonstration films, book readings and more.